Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about how to position a sound diffuser. We can get a lot of emails and, and there appears to be some confusion on this part. So uh, let, let's look at some uh, definitions and applications and I think we can get to the bottom of this. We always work with quadratic diffusion and uh, everybody that looks at our website and, and talks to us through email and, and telephone realize that we like quadratic because it's consistent and predictable, has a measured frequency response, so it's a great acoustical tool, but it's widely misunderstood. So with quadratic diffuser, you know we have a series of wells and each of these wells is based on one quarter wavelength rule and each of the well width is half wavelength rule. So you get a tool that's really versatile in distribution and frequency response, so we like this particular uh, technology and, and support it uh, tremendously because it's a, a great uh, great tool to have in your acoustical uh, palette if you will. That said, there, there's diffusers, quadratic diffusers that need to be positioned correctly in order to achieve a sound field. How many sound fields do we have? We have three, length, width, and depth. Okay, so with a vertically positioned diffuser in our room, sound spreads out in a horizontal fan-like array from the diffuser. So we get this horizontal spreading of sound with the diffuser. Let me try another little better way here. So we get this fan-like array, but it's not vertical. It's more horizontal, so it goes like this, okay? There's an inverse relationship to the position of the quadratic diffuser and the sound that it spreads out. A vertically positioned diffuser spreads sound out in a horizontal fan-like array. A horizontal positioned diffuser spreads sound out in a vertical array. A ver vertical array. So we get two dimensions of sound uh, by the way we position the diffusers, and that's the predictability and consistency of diffusion. Where to use what positions, where in the room, is a function of, of room usage. What, what are our room usages? Home theater, control, and listening. And they're all a little bit different in their approach. Let's take the control room and look at that. Okay, with our control room, we have a couple issues that we need to address, but the consistent issue that we need to address in our control room is always the rear wall. The rear wall is always an issue here. So how are we going to deal with the rear wall? Well, a popular method in today's studios is to use diffusion and quadratic diffusion is a method of choice. So we know that with vertically positioned diffusers, we will be spreading sound out in this horizontal dimension. Years back, they used both hor uh, vertically and horizontally positioned diffusers to give two dimensions of sound field. That kind of thinking now has gone by the wayside, and, and I believe the two dimensions of diffusion add a little bit more confusion than we really want. So it's now vertically positioned diffusers with a horizontal array. Now this is a control room. A home theater room and listening room are a little bit different. With a home theater room, okay, we have all these multiple sources. So we have side, rear, channels, and uh, all kinds of sound fields generated by the front channels. We have a whole set of sound field energy di directed by the side channels, and we have a whole series of energy directed by the rear channels. So each one of those sound fields has to have a particular technology employed to maximize those three sound fields. And it's always a combination of diffusion and absorption in a home theater room that achieves the, the best results. Diffusion on the rear wall and ceiling are, co are common uh, applications for quadratic dif diffusion in home theaters. Critical listening rooms, a little bit different approach here, more similar to the control room scenario than the home theater listening room, but in a critical listening room, we have our two channels 
and we have our seated position. Diffusion on the rear wall is popular. Diffusion on the front wall is popular. And then absorption technology on the side walls to minimize the time signature of the reflections. What does diffusion on the front and the rear wall do in a critical listening room? It gets rid of acoustically in our brains the boundaries. It makes the room larger, appear larger to our brains. So diffusion takes away this reflection from the boundary surfaces and, and our brain won't localize that there's really a wall there. It'll give us the impression that there's more distance there. So diffusion on the front and rear wall in a listening room is advisable. That gives us more spacious uh, feeling, more air if you will, and diffusion also adds a lot more definition to the signal. Poor diffusion is prevalent 99% of the rooms I see. When I put diffusion in it and the customer hears the difference, they wondered how they lived without it. So how to position a diffuser? It really depends on your room usage. Is it home theater, control, or listening room? And each has its own special applications because each sound field that you're trying to create is different. Vertical and horizontal diffusion placement with quadratic is a great way to achieve it. You also have to keep in mind the diffusion diffuser, diffuser to speaker distance. And there's some confusion what we're having with that also. We discussed that in a video. This, this is our listening position and this is our diffusers, we have to realize that the prime number sequence that we choose for our diffusers has that the seated distance has enough space for the waveform to fully form before it reaches the listening position. And how do we determine that? Well, we've went over that in past video videos, but uh, a good summary is take the lowest frequency of the diffuser and its quarter wavelength, take it times four, and add 50% of that distance. If you have that distance, then you can use the particular prime number sequence. And we have 7, 11, 13, 17, 19. So as you go higher up the scale, you need more distance between the diffuser and the listening position. This is what confuses some people. It's the listening position distance from the diffuser to the listening position that's critical. You must have a certain amount of distance for the frequencies to fully form it with the diffuser. So if you have any questions about that, just send me your information and I'll be more than happy to tell you what prime number diffusion will work for that particular situation. We offer the 7, 11, and 13 on our website. You can build it yourself, provided you have the proper distance. Unsure about that? Just drop me a line or call me and I'll, I'll be more than happy to tell you the correct distances. If you enjoyed Thank today's you. video, if you did, give me a thumbs up so I know that it had value to you. And please, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section and I'll be more than happy to answer them for you. Alternatively, if there are other topics that you wish to discuss, discuss or see discussed in a video presentation, send me a, an email, info at acousticfields.com, and uh, we'll get them on our list and, and get them done for you. I release a new uh, video about every week, so stay tuned to our YouTube channel and keep uh, updated on our new videos.